Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. You are tuned into our YouTube channel for our weekly video analysis. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. So today we're going to look at the Bollinger Band Squeeze and IJR and show you how to combine Bollinger Bands, Bandwidth, and Percent B to get a basic trading strategy using a Bollinger Band Squeeze. Then we're going to look at the main driver for small caps because one sector is clearly playing an outsized role in the performance of small caps. And then we're going to look at XLF hitting a new high as the regional bank SBDR bounces. I want to show you a chart and a strategy based on Bollinger Bands. So on this chart here, we've got Bollinger Bands in the main window. That's the pink area plot that you see there. In the first indicator window, I've got band width. And so this is giving us a value for the percentage difference between the upper band and the lower band. And then the lower window has percent B which tells you where price is relative to the upper and the lower band. So when you get above the upper band, percent B goes above one, and you can see the green dashed lines. And when you go below the lower band, percent B goes below zero. And we had that in late October there. So the strategy here is you're looking for a Bollinger Band squeeze, because what that tells you is you've had a volatility contraction. And John Bollinger in his classic book, Bollinger on Bollinger Bands, theorized that you're going to get a volatility expansion after you get a volatility contraction. And so that's why we use the Bollinger Bands to identify that volatility contraction. Now, we have to use other techniques to, A, decide our trading bias, and B, to actually get the signal that suggests we're going to make a move. So first thing we're going to do is define the overall trend. And you don't be, have to be a genius to realize that the overall trend is up. Here's the low on the lower left, and there's the high. But basically, we're in an uptrend. We had a 52-week high there in mid-March. We're above the rising 200-day. So that suggests that we should have a bullish bias. At least I do, because I want to trade in the direction of the bigger trend. Now, yeah, one of these consolidations is going to evolve into a reversal, and we're going to see a deeper pullback someday, but we don't know what that day is going to be. And as long as the bigger trend is up, I'm going to look for bullish setups, and I'm pretty much going to ignore bearish setups. On this chart, we can basically see three Bollinger Band squeezes as measured when bandwidth goes below 5%. We had one there in late December, early January, and then we got a breakout. We had another one in early February and got a breakout. And we had another one there on March 8th and got a breakout in early March and got a breakout. And each one led to new highs. Even though we didn't see like big gains after the breakout, we still extended higher over time. We almost had a squeeze there at the end of October, and then there's the big breakout just after the election. So we've had three squeezes, and we've had three surges above 1%, and we're currently in the current squeeze. And so you can see these bands have narrowed. Bandwidth is below 5%. Now, sometimes we don't need to wait for a move above the upper band. We can use a resistance breakout because clearly you have resistance with these highs here from early and mid-April, and you've broken above it. And so this is support, and as long as that breakout holds, it's bullish. We could go back into the consolidation. I wouldn't consider that too negative, but if we do break below this low here from the previous week or so, then that is going to be negative and could bring on a bigger correction. Not all signals work out, but right now there's a bullish signal here and a breakout working, and it's working until proven otherwise. 
Now this chart shows IWM and you know we don't always need Bollinger Bands to figure out that we've got a consolidation or a loss of trend. In fact, you don't need indicators really that much because everything is there on the price chart and indicators are a derivative of price. So they're just reflecting what is happening on the price chart. And at the end of the day, it's pretty much best just to study your price action. So this chart for IWM, you can see here we hit a 52-week high. Then we had a pretty sharp decline. And then we had a bounce and then a consolidation. So basically, actually, if you look back to February, you can see we've been flat. Now, I know some people are going to want to draw a diamond there and call it a bearish reversal pattern. But my rule of thumb is don't go looking for bearish setups when the long-term trend is up. And when you're in a bull market, we're in a bull market right now. IWM's in a long-term uptrend. So why look at bearish setups? It doesn't make sense to me. So this is a triangle consolidation, represents a rest. And a rest is pretty normal because if you look at this advance, we went from 150 to 235 without much of a pullback. So we're, we're ripe for a rest. And this is just digesting these gains. And you can see IWM is breaking out. And the little tell before the breakout was this bullish engulfing at this line here. So it looked like we were coming down, but then we got a bullish engulfing and a little follow through. So we have a bullish signal here, and I would mark support at 215. The indicator window shows the average directional index. And I don't use this very much uh, because as I said before, everything you pretty much need is on the price chart. Indicators, I think, are good for running scans, and they're also good for identifying setups, which is what you do with running scans. They can narrow your universe. But the way ADX works is, you know, when it's above 25, you've got a strong trend. Up or down, it doesn't matter. So you can see here that this period from the second week of November until the end of February, ADX was above 25, and we had a strong trend. Then we got ADX moving below 25, and when it goes below 20, that means there's no trend out there. There's a weak trend, and that's the blue shading. And so it's kind of been hovering around 20 here, and that confirms the consolidation we're seeing on the price chart. There's no trend. We're consolidating. But right now we're breaking out, and it looks like IWM is poised in that consolidation. So here is the main analysis page at Trend Investor Pro, and this is where I put all of the most recent commentary. There are some free articles, and there are also some paid articles for subscribers. There is a free article, Small Caps Keeping Everybody Guessing, and this is where I talk about the Bollinger Band squeeze and also ADX, which I just talked about. And then on Tuesday, I noted a little relative strength in some high beta ETFs. Believe it or not, they're perking up again. So what I was doing was I was comparing SPY with IWO, the Russell 2000 growth ETF, and I was comparing QQQ to QQQJ. And this is real nitty-gritty granular chart analysis. You know, this is going through a lot of charts and studying the price action. And what I've got here is benchmark highs. And so basically, we have a high here, and you can see that IWO is breaking above that high. And we have a high here in SPY, and it's not breaking above that high. We look at QQQ. It's got a high, and it's not breaking above that high. But QQQJ, which is the higher beta end of the NASDAQ 200, it's from 101 to 200, is breaking out. And so the fact that these two are breaking out and getting a higher high when spying QQQ or not tells me there is some relative strength there. And then further on in this article, I went and looked at the breakouts in detail and looked at Brazil as well as emerging markets. And this is available to subscribers. Now, I'm going to move on to regional banks. But before I do that, I want to point something out as far as small caps are concerned. I'm on ETFdatabase.com, ETFDB.com, and I pulled up IJR, and I'm going to click on that charts link. 
and we're going to get a basic chart for IWM. And then if you scroll down below that, you're going to get a sector breakdown as far as what is in IJR. And if you look at the sector breakdown, 24.15% finance, by far the biggest sector. And then we can see producer manufacturing, electronic technology, we'll just call that technology, technology services. So together, those two are coming to around, that would be 16% or so. Still, these two combined are not as big as finance. Uh, so finance is clearly the big driver here in this ETF. And if you're thinking of small cap finance, you're thinking of regional banks. Now, we can also do this exercise for IWM. So I'm going to pull up that chart here. And we can see there's the Russell 2000. And if we click on charts, and then we look at the sector breakdown, we can see that finance is 23.39% of the ETF. Again, the biggest sector in the Russell 2000. So we need to look at those small banks for a clue of what's going to happen with IWM and IJR. So here's a chart showing XLF and the S&P 500. And man, look at XLF. It just continues to march higher. That is a 52-week high on Wednesday. You know, you had pullbacks along the way, but pullbacks were opportunities. Here's another pullback that was an opportunity. Uh, this one's a little too short for my blood, but it was a pullback and then a move to new highs. And it's keeping pace with the S&P 500 hitting new highs. So finance is one of the bigger sectors, but not the biggest. But if you want to get to the smaller end of the finance sector, you need to get to regional banks. And here is KRE. And I've got the Bollinger Bands on there. And there you can see we've got a squeeze here in January or late uh, December, early January, and a big breakout. We've got a squeeze now, and we've got a breakout working. Now, the thing about trading is you got to think like Nick Raj of the Chartist in Australia, the next 1,000 trades. Some of these aren't going to work out, but you need to have a plan. You need to plan the trade. You need to trade according to that plan. But right now, we have a squeeze, a triangle, and we have a triangle breakout in KRE. And one indicator that can help you with a trading plan is the ATR trailing stop. So I'm here on Stock Charts ACP. And if you click on the plugin link at the bottom right, you can see the plugins available. And there's the Trend Investor Pro Indicator Edge plugin. And I've got the ATR trailing stop in red. So here we can see a little flag pullback and then that breakout in February in KRE. And the ATR trailing stop is two ATR22 values below the highest close. And so it rises until you get a decline big enough to break that line. And so this was a pretty good little trade here. It didn't get the high, but you're never going to get the high. Then we have the triangle consolidation and a breakout. And I put the ATR trailing stop on there as an initial stop loss to watch. So if you'd like to know more about TrendInvestorPro.com, you can click on the link in the description below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again next week. Have a great day.